Hello and welcome, PML fans, to PML DC. I am your host, Admin Joe, and along with me is my co-host, uh, Admin Dusty. Hello. Welcome, Dusty. Everyone can hear him this time. We've made sure. <laughs> so it's not <laughs> me talking to myself for 16 minutes. It was interesting. I watched all 16 minutes. I did too. I was just like, why is there such a long pause? And I was like, well, I guess Dusty had a lot to say at that point. It's talking to the voices in your head. It's all right. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to go over the differential and the stand and division standards real quick. Since this is week five, that means playoffs is in two weeks. And it's getting close over here in the Canada division. With the Chi-Chi, it's 3-2 to two with the plus 1. PSG with 3-2 and two with the plus 12. And the Kings with the 3-2 with the plus 5. That's a three-way tie for second and third place. Uh, tie Warriors are 1-4 and four with negative 13. But they still have a chance. Um, it just all depends on these last two weeks and how the games are played out. Polyras are at two and three with the chance to get in still. And then uh Minior's uh is one and four. They actually had a forfeit this week, so their chances are very looking very slim, especially with that negative nineteen differential. Uh, yeah, but as being that people can just get six owed out of nowhere in this so uh, I mean like besides maybe the Minior's there's hope for everybody else. <laughs> And uh, you go ahead and sh tell us about the Alolan side, Dusty. Uh, well, leading, we've got the uh, Rapidash is with that five wins, zero losses. Looks like uh, they've got that plus 17 differential right now. Uh, then it looks like the Gators with a 4-1 win to loss, plus 12 for second place. And uh, we've got pretty close uh, tie for, th not tie, but rankings for third we've got the blades three wins two losses with a negative one and we've got the tyranitars with a three two win loss with a plus one so those two are teetering really close to one another but then it looks like we've got the jirachi clones at a two to three win loss with a negative one so he's right around the same area oh yeah uh, yeah and then, of course, we've got me with one win, four losses at a negative six. And then the Grand Bulls, zero wins, five losses at a negative 25. <laughs> I think that's going to break the record for the PML worst differential. <laughs> but what's going to well, be more exciting? Has, I mean, something has to be the worst, right? Oh, yeah. There's got to be a starting point, but. That might be a record that's never been that'll never be broken. But uh also best differential in the league so far is very impressive plus seventeen by the Rapidash. Yeah, that's actually he's done really well. And uh he was my opponent in what we're about to do, so everybody will get to see what's grown or fallen from there. <laughs> All right, well, the first game is we're going to start with Chartridge versus the Tire Roars. And as always, since it's my game, I won't say too much about it. But um, I feel like I played well, but I could have done a little better if it wasn't for some mispredictions and misplays. But that's Pokemon. It's going to happen. And uh, for the Tire Roars, what I have down here is they played good, really good, for losing the game. Because they only lost it by, I believe... Uh, Minus one. Yeah. So, I mean, my differential isn't getting any better, but his is definitely not getting any worse. And uh, that pile of swine scared the shit out of me at most points in that game. Uh, well, I really liked, at the very beginning, your flame body got his pincer from your magmar, and you predicted the switch in your will wisp the mammoth swine, but it, it kind of did a turn later on. Uh, you, it looked like you were going to predict something with a status, and he switched in and had already somebody with a status condition. So, Yeah, he he had it in that pincer, and I figured he was going to either let it go down or he was going to bring in Milo to, to take care of Magmar, so he had pincer for later. So uh, I, I tried to go for the toxic on the potential Milo switch in, but that didn't happen. No. 
but then like your your uh mawile took out three of his mons there at the end oh yeah that mawile has definitely been the mvp of my team for the last few weeks since i got it with those plus three kills in both games you got the double swords dance with sucker punch <laughs> I honestly, if I wouldn't have got that double uh, swords dance, I would have lost to the Milotic because I did the Calx, and uh, just plus two would have not killed it from the health it was at. I know that Mawile is scary. That's one of my favorite Megas since we've started doing these draft leagues, just watching her like go to town on things. I actually was not even trying to get Mawile. I was actually talking to Josh. And I was like, Josh, uh, Mega Aerodactyl, I like it, but it's not doing anything for me. Who should I switch for it? And the first thing he said was Mega Mawile. And I was like, really? He was like, dude, trust me. You're going to like it. <laughs> and I have so far. I started liking it when I was the fairy gym leader for the group. And I used it for a while, but then I traded fairy for dragon not too long after. <laughs> You went from the being the dragon killer to killing uh, Tinkerbells all over the place. I'm trying to, anyway. <laughs> Alright, well, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next game. Uh, Rapidash versus Knights, and this was your game. Yeah. Um, I, I was a bit disappointed. I prepared what I thought for a lot. I did a lot of mock battles. Um, what I didn't prepare for was him bring in two really thick walls. He brought Musharna and uh, Florgis against me. And by the time I took those down, I had run out of steam, so he was able to pick me off with that uh, fantastic uh, Nagandel. Is that how you say it? Nagandel, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that thing is just a monster lately. It's definitely one of his best. And, and he also had Infernape, which didn't do a whole lot. He didn't have to use it much against me, but... Yeah, his his Infernape didn't do much, but it was Scarf, so it actually helped him out in, to a sense. But, yeah, um, he uses his Infernape the same way I use a few of my Pokemon when they're Scarf. Definitely with that U-turn to get in, just that little bit of damage does a lot of extra help in a lot of battles. Oh yeah, it definitely get, uh, kept him uh, with positive momentum for the battle. And uh, I did like the calm mindset he had on that Musharna, and obviously he's one of those people who like his little bulky mons. Being a little stally, but <clears throat> he was making it use some power at the same time. Yeah, he told me later that he's pretty proud, like he's gotten a lot of respect for Musharna, and I was just like, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, and it's crazy, because, uh, I mean, this guy, he, he came in, he said he's done Draft League's battle before so he he really knows what he's doing, and his record reflects it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I was going into this hoping that I wouldn't lose to a six zero, because I've I've already had something similar to that happen, <laughs> uh, and I was just happy to at least take his two big bulky mons out. Oh yeah, the the ones that you wouldn't think you'd be able to take out, and uh. I did put in here that Hydreigon's bulk, I'm, I'm assuming you had some bulk on it because it was able to take that Musharna hit and you kept yeah, it from sweeping. Yeah, I actually made a Hydreigon just for this battle. Scared I was going to have to face off against a fairy move. <laughs> <laughs> As always. Yeah. But um, you, you, had a, you had an awesome protect play on one of those plays. I can't remember what play it was because it's been a while since I've seen the battle. <clears throat> um, it had to have been Slowbro was trying to do some. Oh, uh, <laughs> he had Thunder, Thunder. Uh, oh, Electrium Z. Crystal Z that's right. And I protected with uh, Slowbro, and he survived it, which I was pretty shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he didn't even get to Red Health. He was still up there in the orange. And I just thought I that was, was pretty cool. I was thinking about that later because I had Psychic on Slowbro. I was like. Would he have survived if I didn't protect? I don't think he would have, but it would have been awesome if he would have been in the red and Psychic would have killed it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it wouldn't have uh, lived because it would have, when you're protected, I think it only does 25% of the damage. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> so it probably would have killed you from full, and that shows how much investment he had in that Naganadel special attack. 
but he did have a perfect cleanup set with it because he just had to move for every one of your Pokemon that you had left. Yeah, he did a lot. He did good prep, like I'd say. Well, the, what else can you expect except from a veteran player to have that kind of strategy? Right. Like, he, he knew, like, I only have a few Pokemon that can learn good moves against that thing, and uh, he was ready for all of them. Yeah. And uh, uh, for uh, PSG versus the Kings, there's not much to say about it except PSG, perfect prep, got the 6 -0. Yeah, I did notice he he called back that Sneasel at 1 HP to get that differential. Oh, yeah, he did. It's just like that, that little cheeky uh, callback so he can maintain differential, which is good that he did that because differential is very important for the playoffs. But it's just funny to see that 1 HP Pokemon get called back. But I <clears throat> speaking of that Sneasel, he he did have great prep on giving it inner focus so it would not flinch. I had that marked too in Cinderor's <laughs> take out failure. <laughs> yes, I was just like, wait, what? And then I had to look it up. I was like, does it get inner focus? And sure enough, it had inner focus right there. I was shocked at like I, I shouldn't be shocked by his Nahaligo any more than after I've seen everything that's done. <laughs> but like how it one shot Mega Beedrill. I was just like, "Oh dear." <laughs> yeah, that's Mega Beedrill is very frail. It, I mean, it hits like a tank, but if you get it, if you how how am I trying to say this? If you can get a gust of wind to hit it, it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> like me in almost all of my battles. Oh. <laughs> but there was one weird thing that I didn't understand. <clears throat> when the Kings were playing, I did not see uh, Ninetales have a snow warning. Its hidden ability is Snow Cloak, um, which I think increases its evasion in a snowstorm, so I don't know if he was going to try and hail. Yeah, that's what I want to know too, but even when he had the chance to set up the hail, he still didn't do it. Didn't. Yeah, that's I, I noticed the same thing because when it came in and it didn't hail, I stopped for a second. I was like, uh, I'm waiting. What? <laughs> right. I was like, Sand Slash is just here to support, not not to sweep. But uh, yeah. yeah, so I was just like, well, Sand Slash is basically useless unless he has a plan for it, but it had no plan at all. Which was kind of sad because last week that Sand Slash put in a lot of work for him. Yeah, I, I believe it got three kills. Yeah, it, it was tanky and, like, it couldn't be stopped. But, yeah, I mean, Stewart has been a uh, team. The Kings is a team, is one team that I've been enjoying watching. But just this week, I don't know what he was doing, if he didn't have enough time to prep or what. But, eh, it, it wasn't that Maybe great of a battle on his side. Too. Oh, yeah. I, Paul, Paul's pretty good at strategizing. Oh, I know. I'm just saying, uh, just from the, the prep he's brought before, it, it was, like, very... He he just looked very unprepared. Yeah. But, I mean, not going to take anything yeah. away from Paul's prep as well. He he did do good in that inner focus set, and just Nihil Lego being able to have the coverage yeah. to take everything out. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, they were, they're both... It was, it's a really good matchup like uh, maybe he just didn't have the prep time because we've both seen them do really well and i've seen their play styles and these guys know their pokemon so yeah and that's just the thing it, it it's any given weekend where someone can have a good week some people are gonna have a bad week and even then that may it might have been a misgen on stewart's part with the nine tails and i mean things like that happen so you never know We've all had, like, a week where we've done kind of bad. Like, we've all had an off week so far, it looks like. Oh, yeah. My, Except for the rapid ashes. <laughs> I, I've had a, I had a real off week against the mini yours. I just played terrible that week. Uh, mine was against, I believe it was the Jirachi clones. Yeah. I think you <laughs> got six Dragon Dance. Oh, no. Uh, that was the Gators. 
that Gator. Dragon danced on you. Twice. <laughs> All right, and then um, the next game we have is Blades versus the Tyranitars. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of things going on in this game that I liked. Yeah, there were quite a bit. Like, I thought they both were utilizing switching out really well. Like, they both battled really, really well. Um, they both had great switches on the Z moves. Both of them basically just burned their Z move for no reason against each yeah. other. I, as soon as that happened to Matt, no offense, Matt, you're probably going to listen to this and you're my best friend, <laughs> but I laughed my ass off because you always get me with that damn coma. <laughs> It was nice to see it nullified for a week. Yeah, go Whimsicott. Like, I'm sure <laughs> Joe Sylvester will love that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he did. He does like that Whimsicott. And uh, uh, I, I was just happy not to have to edit out his E-move last week. So, <laughs> that was uh, fun. My favorite thing that happened is Matt Toxic Snorlax, but Morgan's clever enough to have Facade for stab on his Snorlax just in case. So, I mean, that did beast power up Snorlax a little bit. Oh, yeah. It actually helped him put in a little bit of work. But um, I have noticed that uh, he uses Snorlax towards the end a lot. Yeah, it's always usually his last Pokemon. Uh, I would like to see it be more of like a starter or like a mid-game kind of Pokemon. Because it does need that ability to set up. And if it can't, if you wait till the end and try to set up with it, it could get nullified a lot easier than if he would try to set up in the middle or at the beginning and uh, and what you call it, and avoid those stat drops that his opponents could do to him. Yeah, like the uh, um, Intimidates. But nonetheless, yeah, it's, it's not like it's a good mind. It's just it has the bulk to set up mid-game at least, and he should try to get it done around that time. But, well, he's using your advice for Cloyster <clears throat> on that, so maybe he'll utilize it for Snorlax. <laughs> we'll see. Yes, I mean, Cloyster's more of that Pokemon you want to set up at the end, because it's just super fast and hard-hitting, and it's not normally going to take a hit at that point, so you don't have to worry about that. I don't know if our viewers have watched a lot of games, but we've got quite a few sm uh, what are they, Shell Smashers in this that do work. So. Oh, yeah, and then there's some Shell Smash games that flop. <laughs> so it's always fun to see We've if it's gonna it flop or not. But uh, I I did put this um for the T Tars that they did really good, but they just played behind the eight ball all game. They they were not able to take the lead. Yeah, like at the beginning, I noticed it looked like Morgan was gonna set up for uh, Sandstorm, but Matt switched in that Deblade to absorb the immunity during the Sandstorm. And then uh, he, uh, like, what was it? Matt had his Mega in there, drag, or no, he was swords dancing his Deblade, and Morgan got to whirlwind it out. And I just love when somebody hazes or ruins those stat changes. <laughs> yeah, that, that always puts a damper on the opponent whenever they're like, well, shit, I did all this setup for nothing. I've noticed a few of our uh, our battlers have utilized using red card against people to do that, too. Really? I, I haven't seen that. Maybe yeah, I'm not uh, paying enough attention. <laughs> uh, somebody, uh, I won't give out names or strategies, but I've seen it twice now. And uh, it's made me really happy. By the same uh, team or two different teams? Yeah, the same team. Oh, okay. I mean, I have to go back and watch to check for that. Because you never know, it might be my next opponent. <laughs> um. But well, you have to remember, doesn't red card only work if they're physically touched, or does it switch out on every move? I think it works out on both moves, but as long yeah. as it hits. Yeah, it's like the opposite of eject button or something like that. Yeah, because I used to run that uh, Skarmory, Sturdy Skarmory set with red card, rocks, and whirlwind, and it, oh, yeah. that pissed people off. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then um, I did put that the only reason T-Tar's loss was to that speedy Slazzle at the end, and all he had was the Metagross and, yeah. and the Snorlax. And uh, maybe if he had more uh, special 
special special defense investment, he could have probably lived a few more hits. But uh, compliments to Blades on that great strategy with Leech Seed. Oh my god. He was just Leech Seeding everything. Yeah, like, it really annoys me. Like, he, I've noticed, like, at the beginning of the draft, it was usually just Compe doing it. But now Torterra's starting to do it a lot now, too. So. Yeah, it's just like, uh, Torterra <laughs> leftover. <clears throat> no, Torterra didn't have leftovers. But I ha- I did see him one week where he had leftovers, leech, seed, protect. And then he kind of runs the same thing with Compe. And either yeah. one of them will have a different item, but he always has one of those with leftovers, and it just puts in work. And Comfey's, uh really tricky because it has uh, triage as well, which gives priority power to healing moves. So, like, I think it can get Giga Drain. Yeah. So that might be pretty hard to take down. It's got 90 for both special defense and defense, so you can make it bulky. And that's what's actually that took away all the momentum from Morgan. <clears throat> when he was trying to do that shell smash sweep toward mid game, uh, that Giga Drain took priority and took out that Cloister before it could do oh. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that there we know it was triaged. <laughs> yeah, and um, <clears throat> last but not least, uh, game of the week. Uh, just due to the fact that they had such an amazing game, uh, Toros versus the Polyrats. Yeah. It and uh, I think he, this is where you also <clears throat> would enjoy that he did that swamper roar. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's just like you always try to set up on something like that, and then when it just roars, yeah, it's just like, come on, man. Actually, one of my favorite things that happened in this battle was the wheezing sludge bomb. Every time it sludge bombed, it seemed to poison its target, and I was just like, damn, goddamn. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what I saw, <clears throat> too, on the Tauros' side. Um, he was will-o'-wisping a lot of things. And he was going for that stat, like, like status condition for this one. Yeah, he was trying to go for the hacks all over the place. But I didn't understand why he tried to burn the Gudra instead of toxic the Gudra. Cause yeah, that... true, true. Like, Gudra doesn't really need the burn. It's not a physical attacker, so it's not going to lose any power. Yeah, and that's what I noticed. Is like He already showed that it wasn't physical, so there's no reason to take away the burn. I mean, give it a burn and take that little damage when you could get that uh, residual toxic damage that just builds and builds. Yeah. But I did like that he had that uh, Chesto Resto set. Yeah, yeah. That really <laughs> boosted wow. it. As soon as he put it to sleep, I was like, oh, I haven't seen the Wake Up Barry in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, I think that's the first time I saw it in this season in this league. That someone actually ran the ch- Resto Chesto. <clears throat> I'm always so scared of, like, a big Pokemon coming into battle like that. Somebody's going to usually smack it with a knockoff, so. Yeah, that's true. But... Yeah, he got it to work, and it helped him, most definitely helped him win this game. Yeah, yeah. And he had great cleanup at the end. I forget who he started sweeping with, but towards the end, he, uh, yeah, Cartana. I believe he had a choice scarf. Yeah, how could we forget? (laughs) (laughs) One of your favorite ones for BGC. Yeah, yeah. And I the, also did note here. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Good. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I was also going to compliment uh, the Polyrath on the Milk Tank set. It it never really got any offensive pressure, but it was still able to do what a Milk Tank is supposed to do. It annoy the shit out of people. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, well, funny, like, I was going to compliment. Uh, Miltake's counterpart, Taurus's Tauros. Um, for all of our nerdy like people that like it, that's a Tauros that would have been imported from Red and Blue. It's the only way to get a body slam on a Tauros, and it'll always have its sheer force ability. So that thing was beastly. Oh yeah, that was cool to see. And I actually didn't catch that so you told me that, hey, he doesn't get body slam anymore since you got sheer force. 
And I was like, really? So, yeah, I looked it up, and yeah, it's a transfer-only move. So it's like, all right, he's bringing out the trickery here. Yeah, which I really like because Taurus is one of my favorite mods, but he's always used it fun. He's put, like, weird moves on it, so it's not just always physical attack. Yeah, he he's ran that uh, ice beam he likes to use on those dragon types. We all have a dragon that people should worry about, it feels like. <laughs> I, I think I got rid of all my dragon. No, wait, I have a dragon. Yeah, so I have Flygon. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ice Beam would definitely take care of that. <laughs> yeah, that's why I nicknamed it Antifreeze. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's all the games for this week. Let's go ahead and move on to our PML Singles Draft League Kill Leaders. And, of course, number one, PSG Nihilego with 14 kills. No surprise. No surprise. That thing's just been killing everything in its sights. And doesn't even have eyes. <laughs> and then, uh, second place, we have Mega Scizor from the Polyrash with 11 kills. So, it's still on the kill leaderboard. It's been on the kill leaderboard since week one. And I don't see it dropping anytime soon, unless one of these four monsters in third, tied for third place, end up taking its spot. It's just so hard to kill. It has that one weakness, and it's bulky. It's very bulky, and you gotta think not everyone has a good fire type on their team in this league either. No, no, I don't even have a fire type, so I've had to utilize fire moves on all my special attackers hopefully to get a good boost yeah i i had to use hp fire on espion because i have magmar and yeah you know magmar he, he's there not great <laughs> but he's there certainly put in work last week yeah yeah your magmar can take some hits too oh yeah the evil light boost really helps but, um, and then, uh, so basically all the tied for third place is Mega Metagross with the Tyranitars, Kartana for the Tauros, and the Rapidash actually have two Pokemon with eight kills, Naganadel and Infernape. This is my shock face. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, Rapidash, yeah, they're doing very well for themselves when they got two kill leaders on the kill leaderboard. Well, that and they're undefeated at the point of this video. Yeah. And also, uh, guys, uh, coming up pretty soon at the end of the season, before we get into playoffs, um, we will have a vote for uh, the two coaches you want to coach for the Pro Bowl, basically. The Poke Bowl. And, um, then, and that will be the week after the championship game. So even if it's a championship coach, they will be able to do that battle if they get voted in. And uh, I will start a poll on the PML group page uh, starting tomorrow on Monday. And uh, hopefully we get so many votes and these coaches actually would be willing to go out and do that for us. And also, um, the teams will be the top kill leaders in each division, the top six. Oh, nice. So, the team might not synergize very well, but they will be the deadliest Pokemon in the league. Yeah, God. <laughs> don't, don't vote for me, because I don't want to have to face down, like, <laughs> these. Well, you'd have a Nihilego. You'd have... Nagata you <laughs> You would have five of these Pokemon on your team. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so uh, go ahead, um, be ready to vote for that tomorrow. And thank you guys for watching. So long. Bye.